with special thanks to Jackson Rancheria Park and Field Restoration Project. Please get involved. Our children need and deserve it. And Roundtable Pizza, the last honest pizza. And now, TZL, Teen Zone Live. Good evening, I'm Zach Kirkham. And I am Danny Weinrock. And this is Teen Zone Live. The show for kids. Bye, kids! <laughs> Tonight, we would like to thank Roundtable Pizza, the last honest pizza. Very delicious. It was. Good food. Oh, oh, muy, muy delicioso. So what do we got on the today's show? That is a very good question, Zachary. Let us see. Well, first, segment one, over on the news set, we have our lovely host, Alec, Alexis, excuse me, and Sam, and they will be interviewing Desi from Operation Care. I've heard they're going to be uh, talking about the fun run. Fun run. Hmm, that sounds very interesting. I can't wait to find out what that's about. I know. I've heard about them. I hear that, you know, a lot of colors. It's a lot of fun, though. Um, I'm excited to learn. And then after that, we are going to be talking with Desi again about peer pressure and the effects that hmm. that can have. That's very interesting. And who will be hosting that? Um, that will be Sam and I. I'm pretty excited. Oh. And then after that, we're going to be going to actually one of our friends and family over here. This is Daniel. Oh. He's pretty wow. awesome. Used to, uh, we actually used to be friends back in uh, my days of drama. That's really cool. It was awesome. And what are we going to be doing after that? Right after that, we will be doing, oh. Why? It will be you and me. We'll be doing high school sports. I'm going to get tired of you by the end of the night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're not quite done yet. Right after that, <laughs> back on the news set, we have Emily and Alexis for our entertainment segment. I hear that, you know, they're going to be talking about all the awards that are going around. You know, you sure do hear a lot of things. Where I do you do. hear these from? Well, I got big ears, so I just kind of, oh, I pick yikes. them up as I go. I see. Eh, radar. Right over that, we have Alexis and Juliet over at the round table discussion. I mean, at the round table. At the round table, yes. We're going to also be discussing peer pressure. I'm pretty excited about that. And they have a guest on. Do you know who that is? I do, but it's a surprise. Oh, a surprise. It's I a see. friend. Oh. And then after that, we're going to be doing some cooking. Really? Yes. I, well, actually, you're going to be doing some cooking. Really? I was not aware of this. Yeah. News to you, me, and both. What are we cooking so I can prepare? Um, we're going to be cooking tuna croquettes. Oh, that will sound very tuna-like. Yeah, okay. So you, I, you, you really know what you're doing, right? Yes, I do. Okay, I, you never know with you. I've seen you cook. This eyebrow is still growing back. <laughs> Oh, well, hey, it's not my fault you fell on the electric stove. You left the butter out. <laughs> not my problem. There's two. Hmm. So who else is going to be cooking with you? That will be my lovely co-hosts, Sam and Emily. Ooh, that'll be fun. It will very much be fun. So what are tuna croquettes? They're, well, I think we'll get to that when we get there. Oh, I like, guess you could say it's a surprise. I don't like surprises. Well, that's a shame, because you just gave me a surprise, and I feel very offended. Oh, because you didn't know you were going to be cooking? Partially. Don't let him cook, it's scary. <laughs> oh, trust me, it'll be delicious. Not that you'll be able to taste it, unless you just recently purchased Tastovision. Is that, like, is that like 40? 40, Four, 40. 40. You know how they have 3D television? I know. I think it's 50 or 60. Oh. It's high definition. That's all I know. Or 67, 68. I can't remember. I can't count that high. Neither can I. That's why I'm still in preschool. So on our discussion on tonight's thing, peer pressure. Have you ever been peer pressured? Have I been peer pressured? To be honest, I can't really recall anything major, but I'm sure various little things like Oh, I actually do remember one. One back at uh, a certain vacation with a certain friend of mine who's sitting right next to me. One minute. Have you ever been peer pressured? I have. Really? By a certain friend who's sitting next to me to play... Um, some, I don't see him. ...some random games at lunch. Those things get pretty hmm. weird. I don't think I can recall. Of course, though, I mean, those are typically some pretty good peer pressures. I mean, what are some like negative peer pressures that you've seen? Well, negative, 
No, there are lots of definitely bad things with peer pressure, and peer pressure, I believe, is generally associated with the bad things. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, we'll definitely be uh, learning more about that tonight. I'm pretty excited. Very much so. Can Have you, you ever... Oh, I'm sorry. All right, well, I do believe we're going to go over to our next host over at the new set, Alexis and Sam, with their host, Desi. And their guest, Desi. And their guest, Desi. What'd I say? Host. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Gizum <Gesundheit. laughs> Hi, I'm Sam Fisher. And I'm Alexis Smith, and today with us is Desi from Operation Care to talk about the Color Madness Fun Run. So Desi, what is the Fun Run? Well, it's actually very interesting. Um, it's really known in bigger areas like Sacramento or even like Arizona and stuff like that. And what it actually is, is it's a 3.1 mile run or walk, whatever you choose to do. And there's four color stations, and at those color stations you get lightly dusted somewhat by color. Do you have to be dusted with no. color? No. There's actually color zones and they'll be marked on the streets. So you can choose to walk in or yeah, not? absolutely. Okay. You might get a little here on your sleeve in there, but it's completely safe. It's 100% biodegradable, all natural, so even if you ingest it or taste it or anything, it's not going to hurt you. So what do you say people should wear to this? Well, what it is is we have limited shirts. Um, we have quite a bit, actually. We've had a huge turnout with this. We anticipated for 100 people, and we've had, we have over 200 now. So what we ask is that registration starts at 9, and it's, um, if you come at 9, it's first come, first serve, and you'll get a t-shirt while well, supplies last. But if you don't get a t-shirt, wear white. And wear kind of pants, you know, that. You don't mind getting, let's go. <laughs> yeah, dirty. I mean, I don't know if you guys can see the flyer or not, but we actually did a before and after on this. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, so, you are going to get colorful, definitely. You're not going to stay clean, but that's the whole fun of it. Yeah, it gets more exciting into the running yeah. or the walking. Yeah, and we, I mean, we have all ages. We have little babies to middle age to older age. It's amazing. At families, we're excited. So, where is it going to be held at? We're going to start at the Margaret Dalton Hall, which is, I think it's 975 Broadway Street. And that's going to be our start and finish. So we're going to start there, we'll go through the Jackson neighborhoods, we'll go by the hospital, we'll go by Sava Mission, and then we'll end back at the Margaret Dalton Hall. And then after that, there'll be a barbecue, so it's a free hamburger, hot dog, chips, fruit. For whoever participated? Yeah. And John Juice will be there too, so they'll be sharing smoothies and what other kind of snacks they have. Nice. So who is it hosted by? Um, Operation Care, the Go Youth Program. And we've, I mean, our main goal was to establish a relationship with the community. We wanted to meet the community, community and, and um, introduce ourselves in a positive way. Mm -hmm. So, hopefully I heard this that, does it. Yeah, I heard that some youth put it on, or was it... Um, we have youth volunteers. Youth volunteers mm -hmm. helped to put it on. That's interesting. Yeah, so we have quite a bit of youth, actually. We had a lot more, but then they wanted to participate, so that's okay. But we've had, I mean, we have volunteers from all angles, so... Yeah. So where do you sign up for this? You can either, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can come to our office. Um, because it's such short notice and it is a Saturday, I would suggest if you do want to sign up still and you haven't, to come to our office and just fill out the registration form. It needs to have one registration form per person, and the only reason why is because we need liability and um, release of photos. Mm -hmm. uh, or you can call and we can email you a registration form and then you can fax it back to us. But we just need them back by Friday for early registration. Otherwise, you can sign up the day of the event, but I can't guarantee a T-shirt is my only... Okay, so sign up ahead. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> when is it at? When is it? Yeah. It's Saturday, and it, registration starts at 9, and the race starts at 10, and then depending on when the last runner comes in, we'll start the barbecue probably between 11 and 11.30. All right. Yeah. Um, can animals come? Yes, we can have animals. What type of animals? Um, as long as they're on a leash, I don't think it really matters. No, I'm just kidding. So, so no dragons <laughs> or ducks or... Hey, if you can find them, that would be actually cool. Um, it, yeah, animals, kids, anybody's welcome. You know, I mean, of course, bring a poop bag. So if you do, bring a dog <laughs> so we can clean up after ourselves. But, yes. yeah, they are welcome. Will the race be, like, marked off with people so people will yes. guide off? 
Yep, there's going to be volunteers at each color station, and there are arrows, and we'll have a couple people in orange vests and actually shirts like this in different colors to kind of okay. keep to everyone organized. Yeah. So what is the money raised through this going towards? It's actually a nonprofit. We are not doing it for money. We're strictly doing it to build a relationship. Um, of course, donations are gladly accepted, but everything's free. So there's no excuse. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. So does the people that come in first get anything? No, we do have a couple numbers um, for timing because there are a lot of runners in this community. So if, if they want to keep their times, we have that available. But other than that, I mean, it's not a competitive race. You can Just totally walk rights. it. Yeah, you can it's jog. It's a fun run. You can do that too. I mean, if you have a group of friends, absolutely. If you guys want to race it and time it, sure. More power to you. We have a timer, so that is available. Can you skip? Yeah. I think the more the merrier. Different ways. Cartwheel it. Yeah. Somersault? Yeah, Steve, why not? Somersault three miles. Good exercise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, I mean, it's just open. You can do whatever. We're there to have fun. That's our main goal. Is it, is it the first year in Amador County? Yes. It's the first year in Amador County for a color run, and it's the first time we've ever done a color run, so... Well, I it's hope a learning it, lesson. I hope <laughs> it is next year too. So yeah, yeah. we're gonna make an annual definitely. Well, we're gonna have to go to commercial break soon. Okay. So so send you over to ad break. But thank you for coming on with us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. And next, we're interviewing you again. Okay. Yep. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. <laughs> And we're back. <laughs> I'm Zach Kirkham. I'm Sam. And tonight we have, again, Desi from Operation Care. So, tonight's thing is peer pressure. What are the different um, types of peer pressure? Um, I think the different types would, I don't know, I guess you would probably say either bad or good. Like, mm -hmm. there's bad peer pressure, of course, like drug use and bullying and you know, and there, but there is good peer pressure. I mean, if your friend's having a hard time and you're encouraging them, you know, to study harder or I don't know, okay. just kind of a positive reinforcement. All right, that's getting a good them to part, do something. Peer pressure, okay. yeah. So, have you had many people come to you to talk about it? Well, um, I would probably say a lot that we have, like with peer pressure, um, would be bullying. We have a lot that stems down from bullying. Yeah. A lot of kids, it's really hard for kids to stand up for what they believe is right because their peers around them mm -hmm. are not in agreement with it. Yeah, it's hard to stand up for what you believe in when you're the only one in the group. Who yeah, because it just kind of makes you, it makes you a target, I guess. Mm -hmm. It kind of makes you a little more vulnerable and a lot of times if you're not 100% sure that's the right thing to do. Yeah, it takes away like, from your confidence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we see a lot, too, with drug use. I mean, in the, with the teens we do see, there's a lot of drug use with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just, why don't you just try some pot? It's not going to hurt you, you know. And at that moment, it's like if you don't do it, you're not the cool kid. If exactly. you do do it, then you're the bad kid. So you're kind of like on a teeter-totter. Yeah, I always come up with excuses. You know, my mom, know, my mom knows everyone in the county, and she'd kill me. That's, yeah. my, that's my general excuse. Yeah, well, and I mean, it's just, you have to believe yourself. Like, you have mm -hmm. to follow your instincts. If you're not comfortable with doing it, don't do it. I mean, just bottom line. And that's where it's cool to be unique, I think, mm -hmm. because you get to share yourself and your great qualities with other people instead of being just like my neighbor or mm -hmm. something. Being a clone of everyone yeah. else, basically. So are there ways to keep yourself out of situations to be peer pressure, do you think? Um. I think peer pressure happens everywhere. I mean, I don't think there's, it could happen in here. I don't think there's a way you can avoid it. Mm -hmm. I think you need to just build your self-esteem and know that what you believe, mm -hmm. no matter what people think, is what you need to follow. Like, mm -hmm. you need to do what you feel is right, regardless of who's telling you here and who's telling you here. Um, a lot of it, too, is talk to adults. I mean, those adults have been there, done that. They probably have a lot more advice or ways around it mm -hmm. to help you through it than you know, doing it on your own. Okay, so like you mentioned adults, who can you, like, who would be good resources to go to? Um, I think if you're at school, I think school counselors are a great start. Mm -hmm. Teachers, I mean, we all have our favorite teachers. I mean, and if you're comfortable enough with them, mm -hmm. it's a great 
avenue to go to, especially if they've been there years and they've seen it over and over and over. Mm -hmm. They probably have a lot of good ideas. Um, parents are a really good thing, too. Um, if you're comfortable, I'm not saying you have to be, but if you have that relationship with your parents, mm -hmm. you should share that. Okay. If you feel like something's not right or something's kind of uneasy, it's nice to have support, and your parents can be your biggest support system. Mm -hmm. um, friends, older siblings, mm -hmm. um, co-workers like this, definitely. I just think it's people who you trust, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you trust them, you should be able to have them be in your support, supportive circle. Okay. What are some common things that, um, I know you mentioned like bullying stuff, what are some common things that people are peer pressured into doing? Uh, well, we all know like drugs. Drugs is a huge thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you don't go to a party and you don't drink, you're not cool for some reason, which is so odd. Um, drinking and driving, that's a big one. Um, wearing name brand clothes, like, oh my gosh, you have to have these expensive jeans because it makes you cool, you know? Uh, ditching school, I don't know if you guys ever, ever had that. Um, not that you would admit it, but you know? Not on TV. Um, there's a numerous things. I mean, I think everything can have peer pressure. I mean, eating a pizza, going on a diet, exercising. I think everything, there's always a yes or no to it. Okay. So when you're in that situation, how could you handle it? How can you handle like, it? What, what can you tell the person who is pressuring you? So if I was in a situation and I was being pressured to try smoking, mm -hmm. what would I say, yeah. like, in general? Um, I think what I would foremost do is try to make a joke of it. Like, I would try to make it enlightenment so I didn't look so serious. But um, if they didn't understand that my seriousness was serious mm -hmm. and they kept pushing me, I would walk away. Like, right. And I wouldn't care. I wouldn't care the words or the reaction that it came because my choice is my choice. So as a friend of somebody who's being peer pressured, what are ways to help them? To help your friend? Yeah. Believe them. Stand up for them. Listen okay. to them. I mean, be their supportive circle. Definitely. Okay. So just kind of help them out when they need it. Yeah, and be unique. Like, be unique. You don't have to follow the in crowd because that's what you're supposed to do. Like, follow your own true beliefs. Totally. Okay. That's a good idea. I mean, because everybody with the media and everything, everybody's pressured to be, you know, a certain way. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult to be well, yourself. Yeah, and you don't, I mean, nobody gets to see your true quality. Mm -hmm. So it kind of takes away from you, too. Mm -hmm. Well, I believe we are going to be going over to the new set with Emily and Alexis. So they're going to be interviewing someone who has gone through high school and knows about peer pressuring. Yep. Hi, I'm Alexis, and, and I'm Emily, and we are here with Dylan, and we're interviewing him on peer pressure. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dylan has graduated high school, so where did you graduate from? I graduated the year of 2012 in Argonaut High School. Hmm. <laughs> so, what... Um, when you were in high school, it wasn't that long ago, obviously, um, was peer pressure a big deal? Not to me, but I mean, for, for most other people, yeah. I mean, yeah, for the most part. <laughs> what are some things you get peer pressured about? A little bit of everything. Here, eat this food, whatever it is, or here, try this, drink, or drugs, like everybody else says. Um, yeah, a little bit of everything. Have you ever peer pressured somebody? Not that I know of. Not that I remember, at least. So uh, not intentionally? Yeah. I like to believe I don't, but I mean, they might consider it peer pressure. So. Have you been peer pressured? Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> not certain legal activities, but yeah, I've been peer pressured. How did you react to this? At first, I was kind of hesitant. Well, I've always been hesitant, but I mean, you're like, what What did you just ask me? Or, what was that? Can you repeat that? Um, yeah, at first, you're just kind of blown away, like, what just happened? <laughs> um, how did you, like, did you stand up for yourself? Did you walk away, like? Yeah, I was like, they're like, hey, try this. Nah, man, I'm good. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. And they kept asking, hey, try it. 
I'm good. Don't worry about me. So did all did this peer pressure affect your high school experience? I think it affects everybody. It doesn't matter really what it is, but yeah, I think peer pressure affected it to an extent. Um, is peer pressure different now from when you were in high school? Mm, now that I'm out of high school, I haven't really been experiencing much peer pressure. But I mean, I've been heard it changed in uh, when I was in high school. I heard it changed. So. Hmm. Okay. So what did you do to get through the peer pressure? I just accepted it. I didn't say not accepted it, probably a bad choice of words, but I said no, and I didn't change my mind at all. Once my mind was made up about the thing, it didn't change at all. Um, did you turn to anybody, like your friends, family? Yeah, you could always, I always turn to my friends. I, my friend list is massive, <laughs> so I could go to any one of them and be like, hey man, I need to talk to you about something. They'd be like, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> so... Um, what type of people peer pressure do? Was it friends or strangers or? Yeah, it was my friends for the most part. Uh, friends that, friends of my friends, mostly people that I didn't really know at the time. And they didn't know me, so they didn't know what I was into, what I wasn't. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it was just mostly friends of friends. So like, not old friends, but like, new friends kind yeah, of? Yeah, I've met them a minute ago. And they're like, hey, <laughs> try it. <laughs> okay. So, since you didn't know the people, was it hard to say no, or was it? Did that make it easier? It made it easier because I didn't really think what I didn't really care what they thought of me at the time. As long as they know where I my limits were at, I decided why not. So would you say like people you were close to, like your best friend, say like them asking you to do something you didn't want to do, would that be harder? Very harder because that happened to, to a friend of mine. He was like, "Hey, try." It. I've known the kid since first grade, and. Uh, that I was so much more harder than just somebody I met a minute ago. That makes sense, because if you knew the person, you would think that you'd have like a bond between them, that they would know not to peer pressure you mm -hmm. with certain items, mm -hmm. at least the bad peer pressure. Yeah, exactly. But if somebody you don't know, then you have no reason to judge them, because yeah. you don't know them, they <laughs> yeah. don't know you. <laughs> Let's just say I, I don't see any of those guys anymore, so. Yeah, saw them once, <laughs> told them new. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly how it is. <laughs> So how did peer pressure while you were in high school affect you or your family even? It didn't really affect my family because they don't know about it. Um, it affected me just that, hey, I've been offered this. Did I accept it? No. I mean, I didn't really experience anything of that. But So what advice would you give now to like students in high school like us? Once you have your mind made up, I say don't change it. I mean... No matter how hard they push, pretty much shove it down your throat, spit it back up, and say, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> um, that would be my biggest advice. So, like, make up your mind and mm -hmm. keep to it. If yeah. you don't want to do it, then don't give in. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you for coming on today. No problem. It was a blast. Yay. It was fun. I had a good time. <laughs> And thank you to Desi to come on too to talk about peer pressure. It is a very important topic, so stand up for your words. We will be going over to ad break. See you and soon. Yes, so enjoy our special ads. <laughs> And we're back. I'm Zach Kirkham. I am Danny Weinrob. And tonight we are going to be discussing some spring and winter sports. You know, I feel some sort of deja vu. I feel like I've been in this scenario before, only slightly different, but I can't put my finger on it. I think we were here about 20 minutes ago. Are you sure? Fairly certain. I don't think so. No, not possible. Who knows? So, what are considered like spring sports? Sports that happen in the spring. Examples are... Oh, oh, you need to be more specific, Zachary. That would be nice. Well, some specific examples are... Uh, I know there's swim. There is... Track. There is softball. There is baseball. There's golf. And there is also trap shooting. It's not part of the school, but I believe it's its own, uh, like, separate club. Okay, what's that one that you play with your feet? I can't remember what it's called. That's a good question. 
I believe it's called football. No, I no, it was no. soccer. Soccer. Oh, That's what it was. okay, like, okay. I'm sorry. Remember. I forgot I'm not in England anymore. Yeah. Spent that year studying at the Globe. We know. <laughs> so, I know you used to do uh, wrestling. How was your experience with that? It was actually a whole, whole lot of fun. Mm -hmm. But it was also extremely time-consuming. And mm -hmm. I personally found it difficult to do much else since I had that, uh, uh, that much pressure. You yeah, know? and I know you took a lot of time off TV. It was kind of sad. I did. So, um, I know the uh, training was pretty hard. What, what kind of stuff did you do? Well, every single day of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we would go to practice after school, and it would go from about 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Wow. And almost the entire time we're wrestling. From 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock, I'm usually being lazy. Exactly. That's my set aside lazy time. Me, now I'm doing homework. So um, what are some like upcoming sporting events? Well, I know for a fact that this very night, actually probably going on this very moment, over at Argonaut, they're having a wrestling duel with Amador, and it's a senior appreciation night. Well, we're going to do awesome, because oh, Argonaut rocks. Oh. Unfortunately, I believe the uh, Amador team is actually fairly limited, or at least it was last year. Hmm. So, um, who coaches like what sports? Well, for wrestling, for winter, mm -hmm. there is uh, Gary Landrigan and Cameron Dugan. And they also have various uh, sort of like guest coaches who come on a lot. Lots okay. of them are, a lot of them are past wrestlers from Argonaut. Okay, that's always nice have somebody that you know knows what they're doing. Mm-hmm. So right now you're not doing any sports, right? If you right. were, if you were to pick one, what would it be? For spring sports, mm -hmm. I would probably have to do trap shooting. Trap shooting, really? Mm-hmm. What do you do in trap shooting? Well, you shoot trap, I believe. You walk around like looking for the bear traps and you just shoot them? Mm -hmm. like I uh, believe that's how it goes. Okay. But in all reality, <laughs> they uh, take these little clay discs called clay pigeons. Mm -hmm. They put them in a machine and it shoots it through the air. And then the person with a shotgun has a shotgun and they go and shoots it right out of the air. You got to hit a moving target? Yes, you do. I have trouble hitting a standing still target. <laughs> well, I suppose that's what practice is for. Very true. So, um, actually, you mentioned swimming earlier. My sister has been doing swimming the last few years. A lot of my friends do swim. They're crazy. Define crazy. It's cold outside, and they're in water. Yeah, I've actually heard a lot that uh, the swimmers in the beginning of the season have to practice even inside of the rain and stuff. I heard, it's pouring I heard and that there's they no like heater in the never, pool. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. I don't know. Props to them, honestly. But I hear it's also very, very lax. Lots of them just like, yeah. just say, hey, I'm not going to come. I am uh, sleeping. And then the coach is like, oh, hey, that's pretty cool. That's interesting. I, I mean, I don't know. I know some people think it's hard. Some people think it's relaxed. Personally, I sit back by the fire while I have that knowledge that my sister is in the pool. Uh, that is always a great feeling. It is. It's like, hey, hey I'm warm. <laughs> Yeah, my friend Caleb actually does it too. He's been trying yeah. to convince me to do swim. Yeah, are you thinking about it? Kind of, but I still don't think uh, my workload is quite light enough for me to take up a sport. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and I, sw I know swim, it takes up a lot of time, and you know, pruny, and it's never fun. Yeah, some of the other coaches for the other sports are... Uh, I have no clue who does trap shooting. For swim, I believe it's Mrs. Sirk and okay. Mrs. Nelson, or Ms. Nelson. I'm not sure if she's married or not. Not yet. Um, okay. Let's see. For track, I know Mr. Hunkins teaches it. And for softball, I believe that's Mr. Lucky. Okay, Lucky's a good math teacher. Oh, definitely. I've had him for every single year of my math so far, and I will continue to have him for the rest of my You're career. Lucky. He's, he's Pretty cool guy. Yeah, I would have to say he's one of my top tier teachers. Okay. So thank you for coming on and, well, kind of, and talking about sports. I definitely learned that you do not shoot bear traps when you're trap shooting. Oh. Who would have thought? I researched very hard. Okay. So I believe we're going over to Emily and Alexis to hear about some entertainment stuff. It's going to be awesome. I hope it will be very entertaining yeah ah, uh -huh, uh -huh, right uh -huh, there. Uh -huh, thank you kind of sad sense of humor <laughs>
11, any minute now. Welcome back, or over here. I'm Emily. <laughs> and I'm Alexis, and we're going to talk entertainment. That's always fun. So, you know what's coming up this Sunday, Alexis? The Super Bowl! Woo! Woo! The 49ers versus the Ravens, which oh. I hear that both of the coaches on the opposite teams are brothers. How crazy is that? That's insane. I hear it only happens like every 10, 15. <laughs> I can't imagine years. that happening <laughs> at all. Like, it's insane. They must both be football crazies. How fun must that Super Bowl party be? Like at their parents' house or something? What team are parents <laughs> gonna go for? I don't know. Are the 49ers. <laughs> Maybe just like make a new team with both the names combined. <laughs> well, so well. the Super Bowl is. This Sunday, February 3rd at 5.30 p.m., not in the morning. <laughs> that would be really sad if it was in the morning. I don't think anybody would watch it. No, I don't think they would. <laughs> it's, a good, it's at a good time. So, Alexis, guess how much Super Bowl tickets are going for right now. $20. $20? You really think $20? Higher? Just a little. Okay. Uh, tickets right now are going for $1,450. That's a lot more than $20. Yeah. Yeah. How much is the <laughs> highest going for? The highest selling ticket is $10,884. Wow. Would you spend that much on a ticket to a sports game? Well, probably not. <laughs> I would probably buy my ticket like five years in advance. So it wouldn't <laughs> be so expensive. So when it is $20. Yeah. That, that's when I would get my ticket. No, we should just buy our Super Bowl tickets for... Like, like the next 10 years. Yeah, like 2023. <laughs> we can go together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, we don't even have teams yet. We, were, we already got our tickets. <laughs> so, next, movies. There's some really good movies coming out. Yes. I am so excited. This Friday, Warm Bodies is coming out. It's a new zombie movie. Instead of people getting <laughs> into zombies, they're coming back to human. Oh, my gosh. This is, like, mind-blowing. Isn't it a love story, too? Yes. Apparently, the zombie guy meets um, a human girl, hmm. and she realizes that they actually still have hearts. Hmm. Well, this Very sounds like the perfect date movie. I mean, there's guys like zombies, and girls, girls like love. Yeah, and girl everybody likes zombies, actually. And it's Valentine's Day is coming up, so come on, guys. Take your girlfriends to the movie. <laughs> You could even take them to see Safe Haven. Oh my gosh, I, that is what I'm doing on Valentine's Day. By myself, I'm going to see Safe Haven. I can go with you. It's a date. Oh, okay. My Valentine right here. Right here, yeah. right here. <laughs> well, Safe Haven is actually coming out on Valentine's Day, the 14th. And it is one of the books by Nicholas Sparks in movie form, which is like, um, the Notebook, Book. Dear John. Walk to Remember, mm -hmm. Meshes in a Bottle. He, he has a lot. Yeah, and they're all really awesome. They're chick flicks. Gotta definitely love chick flicks. <laughs> Another movie coming out that day is Escape from Planet Earth. To take the little ones. You know, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure they don't have Valentine's with parents. <laughs> Come on, treat your kids to Escape from Planet Earth. It's PG. It's about aliens. Mm -hmm. They come down to Earth and meet humans. Humans don't like the aliens. So then they have to <laughs> escape from Earth. But I hear it's going to be cute. Yeah, that movie definitely sounds good. Yeah. I, I'd want to see it. <laughs> it's probably going to be good color because I think it's an animation. Mm -hmm. It's an animated movie. Um, so, on to Oscars. The Oscars. Oscars. The Oscars are coming around again on Sunday, February 24th at 4 o'clock p.m. in the morning. <laughs> 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 it will be playing on ABC. ABC. It is the 85th annual Oscars event. That's a lot of Oscars. <laughs> that is. I think they get better every year. Mm -hmm. More definitely. More movies, different type of movies. Because mm -hmm. the previous year they had different movies. <laughs> <laughs> so, what movies are nominated right now for, let's say, best motion picture? Um, some that I know of is the. Les Miserables. Les Miserables. Yes, that one. <laughs> good movie. That was definitely an awesome movie. Um, Lincoln. Abe Lincoln's good. movie. Um, um, 
Zero some Dark Thirty Zero is Dark also. Zero Dark Thirty. There's some animated movies like Brave and Wreck-It Ralph that were nominated. Oh my gosh, I love that movie. Wreck-It Ralph was awesome. I didn't see it. What? No, but I will see it. I will see it. <laughs> there are some actors and actresses that were nominated too, and like the songs and mm -hmm. I don't know what else they get nominated for, but there's a lot the of categories, and it should be really entertaining. Everyone wearing their nice dresses and suits and everything. And then um, <laughs> some music in like the top 20s was like "I Knew Your Trouble" by Taylor Swift made it to top Again, five. Top five, number five. Um, um, Justin Timberlake "Suit and Ties." That's really? a new single. Ooh, I, think it's like I haven't heard it. Somewhere up there. It's good. It's hmm. good. Um, so, thank you for watching us on the show. Um, I'm Emily. I'm Alexis. And we will be back after the messages. You're watching Amador County's local television network. T-S-P-N. Yay. <laughs> Have you ever peer pressured someone? I am not aware if I peer pressured someone. <laughs> so if I have, I am sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. Uh, Gavin, go ahead. And I'll ask this one to... Courtney. Um, okay. Did you ever get peer pressured? What kind of peer pressure did you get pressured by, if you ever did? Um, not that I really know of. If it was, it was probably like the good kind from my friends, like, don't do that, that's mm -hmm. not good. Do and your homework, that kind of stuff. That kind of stuff, yeah. Join drama. So. <laughs> at Amador. Yes, join drama at Amador. Or not. Amador. Amador. If you're going to do drama, you want it to count for something, right? <laughs> okay, so. Let's see. This one is, I'm actually going to ask two people this question, because this is a good question. I'm going to ask Alexis and Juliet. Pick out the amateur people. We just Sorry. have the best answers. Oh, uh, uh, that's how this <laughs> okay, first off, you, you're going to answer this one first. What kind of peer pressure do you face? Um, I think I face more of the good type of peer pressure. I don't think I face more of the bad. I think... That peer pressure stays away from me because I haven't really dealt with any of it. Okay, so what are some examples of that uh, good peer pressure? Do your homework. <laughs> Be on time. <laughs> School. All the basics. <laughs> okay, so, Juliet, what kind of peer pressure do you face? Mostly positive. I think the kind of peer pressure that you face completely depends on the people you surround yourself by. Mm -hmm. So if you're surrounded by losers, then they're going to tell you to smoke, they're going to tell you to drink, they're going to tell you to lie and steal and do bad stuff. But if you're surrounded by good people, they're just going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> they're going to tell you to do your homework and to be nice and to not bully and to stop bullying when you see it. And yeah. Okay. So why don't you go ahead? Okay. Um, this one's for Courtney. Um, is there a positive peer pressure? There definitely is. It, um, it's the kind that Lexi was talking about, how it's like, be on time, and do your homework, and all that fun stuff. But there's also like the kind that if somebody's getting caught up in something bad, and you may not have to be their friend to tell them, mm -hmm. but you can warn them and stuff. Okay. Let's see, Alexis, go ahead and pull him out. Let's ask two people again. I like that. How about I ask all of you? Ooh. Changing it up. Yes. What kind of advice can you give to teens who face peer pressure? Just say no. Unless it's to like doing your homework or something. Say no. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> you hear it here first, <laughs> See, um, I just have to say, don't let it get to you. I mean, I know that's tough to, you know, do, but you just kind of have to, you know, think that you're better than that, except with the homework. I mean, mm -hmm. what would you say, Gavin? I'd say determine between the right and wrong peer pressures. <laughs> determine between the right and wrong peer pressures, as if you should probably be detective if you know, like, if it's a bad peer pressure or it's a good peer pressure. You should be really selective on what pressure you're taking. Okay, and I believe we are out of time, so we're going to go over to our awesome cooking segment with Sam and Danny. Three, two, one. There you are. Hello, welcome back. I am Danny Weinrub. And I'm Sam Fisher. And we have a delicious recipe for you tonight. 
Tonight we are making tuna fish croquettes. They are similar to crab cakes, except they use tuna, so they are great on the cheap. Now, first off, I suppose we'll start with the ingredients. First, we need a can, one can, or 12 ounces, of tuna. You'll want to drain and flake it. Unfortunately, I have no place to drain or flake it, or to drain it. Uh, oh well. Uh, you will need about 24 saltine crackers, finely crushed. It should equal up to about one cup, one cup's worth. You'll need a third of a cup, plus one tablespoon of mayonnaise, a fourth of a teaspoon of Old Bay seasoning, which is right here. It's uh, commonly used on uh, seafoods. Uh, you need one eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, a fourth of a teaspoon of black pepper, and you will need two tablespoons of vegetable oil to fry it in a pan with. Now then, let us begin. So how much would you say this stuff costs you? Because it looks like a lot at first. Well, if you buy all the grains together, it's going to cost more, but most people have these sort of things lying around. Different kind of oils and, and mayonnaise and stuff, they're pretty common ingredients. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and open up this tuna can right here. Uh, da, 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 this is so where do you say you learned this recipe at? I actually learned it at my high school with my foods class, thanks to my food teacher, Mrs. Lang. If you're listening now, thank you very much. These were very delicious. Oh. There we are. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and drain this first into a little handy bowl that just magically appeared, thanks to my... Uh, little television elves that help me out whenever I'm in need. You really want to make sure you squeeze this tight to get all of the juices out of it. Don't want too much in there. That was a lot of that juice. That should be very, yes, tuna actually has lots of juices in it. That's a good little bit of it. Now I'm going to flake it. Basically what that means is that instead of just uh, taking out one big cake, you sort of uh, tear it out into little bits and pieces. And so there's going to be one third cup of mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and. Uh, plus one tablespoon. Right now, let's just do uh, the one third. Uh, that's what I did last night. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. Yeah, just uh, go ahead and squirt some under there. Okay. Thank you very much. This is the handy squeezable one. Mm hmm. This is the handy squeezable kind. Oh, yes. Yeah, very, very, very nice. Now, uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Now, this is really just the base of the croquette as itself. Ooh, oh my goodness. I am completely forgot to crush these saltines into crumbs. Well, that's no oh. problem. But, uh, really, you can use any kind of crumbs, but uh, right now I'm just using saltines because they're nice and cheap. I'm just going to start mixing a little bit here. Now, uh, once you get... Oh, thank you very much, my TV lovely assistants. <laughs> now, uh, this has already been measured out, and I need to use about half of it. So I'll just guess that right about now. So how long does this take to make? Uh, I, my mom and I actually did it in a very short amount of time. Uh, to uh, Once you actually start cooking it in the pan, that only takes about uh, eight minutes, four minutes for each side. Okay. Now... This is, is what it's going to essentially look like when you're done. But uh, you'll have a bit more seasonings and stuff to your taste. And then you will uh, form into little patties, put them in a pan full of oil, and cook it. Now, everyone is here. The elves have appeared. The elves have appeared. Go ahead and just uh, chop them up with your little hands tearing apart. Guys, they look really good. And I, I totally forgot there's some homemade tartar sauce here, too. Anybody want one? Just take uh, We want to thank uh, Operation Care very much uh, for coming on and talking with us. Thank you very much. We'd like to thank Desi and having Dylan come on. It was really lovely to interview you guys, and we much appreciate it. So if you guys want to do the fun run for Operation Care, go ahead and either, like she said, go online or go to the office. And then... Get your registration then. It's February 2nd, and registration starts at 9 a.m. if you don't do it online or go to the office. 
It's free and it's a great event for a lot of causes. Uh, quick tip, microwaving this makes it sort of lose the crunchiness. So you might want to heat it up back up in a little oven. That's a good tip, Danny. And also thank Jackson thank Rancheria for these awesome aprons. They're doing the park restoration fund. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> and we, like Hattie said, just thank you for all the, no thank you. Thank you for all the wonderful guests that came on tonight. And, you know, goodbye, guys. Goodbye. <laughs> You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN.